Brooklyn, New York. Population, 2.6 million. Population density, 35,000 people per square mile. That's a lot of hungry people in an area too small for easy access to fresh food. Or is it? The average tomato travels over 1,500 miles and usually takes several days to arrive to the store. By the time it gets there, it's less nutritious and has a big carbon footprint. Ben Flanner started the world's largest rooftop farm in a Brooklyn Navy Yard to address this problem directly. He is able to provide local, fresh food that is grown in a carbon-negative soil. He uses biochar. That's the biochar. If you want to introduce yourself, that'd be awesome. Yeah, hey Bob, pleasure to have you up here. Dude, this is sweet, man. <laughs> um, so I'm Ben, Ben Flanner, and I'm the head farmer at the Brooklyn Grange. Um, we have two rooftop sites. We're here at one of them. This is our, our second and our largest. We're standing on 65,000 square feet green roof system, which is a um, mixed organic vegetable farm. So there's vegetables all around us right here where we happen to be standing. We have greens mixes, um, peppers right behind me, some beets, some rainbow chard, um, broccoli rabe. Um, it's October 1st so it's fall-ish and um, we're sort of transitioning out of the summer and into the fall seasons for sort of our last push of vegetables before it gets too cold. What's the most exciting part about this? How can we start up our organizations and businesses that can sustain themselves through you know, the basic profits that they need to, to stay to stay alive, obviously, cover the bills and rent and things like that. But then also that can really integrate and do something positive for the community. And on top of that also, how can we also look at the environment? Because all these three things are all so interlaced in what we might want to consider as sustainability. We have a training program where we teach dozens, maybe even 100, 100 or so people uh, how to farm every year. People come up for between one month and three months um, or even the whole season. And we also have education programs. We've, we've had a, a, uh, almost 5,000 children up on between our two rooftop farm spaces cool. uh, this season. That's awesome. Yeah, the energy that we have, the person I just waved to. <laughs> <laughs> um, and in all the sort of the positivity and the ideas and the fact that we are helping give other people energy too while they give us energy. So I'm under the impression that there is biochar somewhere on the premises. There is indeed we have biochar on this farm we blended it into our green roof media because for a number of reasons it's lightweight it holds microorganisms and it holds nutrient all things that we want up on this roof while we're growing organic vegetables those are good things to have <laughs> <laughs> cool so you want to go show you ben's rooftop garden inspires me it is a great example of creating something amazing in an unlikely situation to produce fresh organic food while respecting the sustainable triple bottom line? What a way to use biochar! From chickens to bees to leafy greens, Ben uses whole systems thinking and biochar to keep his farm sustainable. Vegetables, we're right here in the middle of the pepper patch. It's been a great pepper season. <laughs> and we've, uh, you know, we've been harvesting these for, our, for almost two months now. This green roof mix was blended by Skyland, which is a company in Pennsylvania, and they call their mix Roof Light. And for the first time, uh, th they partnered with Soil Reef to blend in, in this half of the farm, 10% biochar um, with, uh, with, with Soil Reef's biochar to sort of go into that sort of uh, another notch in the puzzle as we try to figure out what is the smartest types of rooftop blends because this is such a new idea. Sure. The farm's been very successful. It's been working really well and we have lots of demand. We have way more demand coming from around Brooklyn and Queens and Manhattan and all of New York City than we can uh, fulfill. Um, people continuously tell us that they can really taste the difference. It's like pulling it out of your own garden. Huh, um, that's awesome. Because we can pick it in the morning and actually have it delivered to the restaurant by, by you know, even by that afternoon or 100% or by the next morning. We've shrunk the supply chain, so um, for people to come back with feedback and say that they can taste the quality or they can feel the difference, you know, that really means a lot to us. That makes a farmer proud, that's for sure. Makes a farmer proud, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ben, thanks so much for showing us around, and I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day. Uh, this is wonderful, and I'm certainly uh, stoked to be here. So thanks yeah, so Bob. much, man. I appreciate it. Totally.